For today's tutorial, we're going to be making a sports logo. This is a Brooklyn Nets logo created in Blender. To create the logo inside of Blender, we need to use an SVG to base the model from. I like to create an outer rim, uh, which we can use to create a bevel effect. So essentially we're creating a series of steps that will be used to reflect light. So as there's more steps, it will mean that there will be more points of focus when light hits it. So all we need to do is just save this out as an SVG and we'll be bringing it into Blender. Okay, so now inside of Blender, what we'll be doing is quickly changing the render engine to cycles and using a GPU if you have one. Uh, we then need to delete the cube and the light source. We'll then be bringing in the SVG logo. So just go to import and click SVG and then locate your file. So as you can see, it's imported them as paths. So we just need to scale these up to a size that's appropriate and also rotate it so it's facing the camera. If it doesn't work, you might have to select them individually as opposed to the collection. Uh, we also need to press tab and move them along to make sure the origin is at the center. This will help when uh, moving things about. As it gets quite tricky to see what we're working on, I like to delete the SVG color as it's always a, like a really solid black. So this is our logo with inside Blender. It's still as a path. It's a good idea to just name all the layers as there's three different parts. Okay, so all we need to do is to duplicate the outer rim um, and press the slash button. Uh, this will bring it into isolation mode and we can delete the internal mesh. This will mean that we have a solid shape to use as our base. Going into the geometry settings of the path, we can actually play with the uh, extrusion and the bevel effects. So here I'm just trying to find out a nice value. This will depend on your, on your preferences as well as your actual logo design. We also want to play with the bevel, which is how smooth the edge looks. I like to go for something quite minimal as I'll be doing a series of stacks. I'm just going to quickly just speed this up just as it'll be a quite a repetitive process of just trying to find the right values to match each part. Once I've started to place them into where I want them, I'm beginning to duplicate each part to offset them slightly. Uh, this will mean that we can have a series of different materials stacked upon one another to create an interesting overall shape for the logo. And using that back plane, we're going to just be increasing it to provide us a base layer to work from. This is pretty much the logo built in 3D, so just quickly save it. Preview, it doesn't really look like much as we've got no lighting source, so I'm going to be bringing in a HDRI. I'm choosing a simple studio one taken from HDRI Haven. Looks quite nice, but we need to add some materials. So I'm going to first start working on the reflective black, which I want to be the face of the material. And then we'll be working on a gold for the internal duplicated bevel parts. So let's start with the B. We're going to add a new material. Uh, these materials are just what I want to work with, but for your own logos, you can work with anything. So for this B, I'm going to be using quite a metallic shader. I feel like the HDRI might be a bit too strong, so I'm going to turn it down as I'll be playing with some lighting myself. So just importing an area lamp, you can actually control where you want the light to be shown. So for this part right now, I'm just developing a two uh, light system just to focus on the front and the back to give us a little bit of rim light while we develop these shaders. So now selecting the front and the outer rim, we can just duplicate the same material, meaning that if we change one, we change all of them. The next focus is to start looking at the gold. So for this, we're just gonna choose like a sort of 
orangey rose gold color and to bring up the metallic values all the way up um, i'm going to choose something a bit more rose gold just to make it stand out a bit and then we're going to be just adding the same uh, material to all the other parts so there we go we've got this nice uh, shader which complements the black so this can be changed depending on what your logo is so it doesn't have to be the orange it can be like a bright green if you wanted it but i'm going to stick with this sort of gold so as you can see the gold reflects as well as the metallic front to make rendering a bit easier on my computer i'm going to turn on transparent so just go to film and you can only render the elements that are actually occupied rather than the entire scene. The next step what we're going to be doing is actually creating a rotating light system. So using one of the area lights, we'll be duplicating it so that we can create two facing lights, which will rotate around the single object. We'll control this using a parented empty. So we're just going to add an empty. we need to add a material for the back plane just as its default material doesn't look so well so again we'll be increasing the clear coat uh, this will just mean that it'll be become quite shiny but we also want some elements where it's not completely clear so we can use a uh, color ramp and a noise texture just to add some dirt so if you look at it it will show these little speckles which doesn't look so great in a preview, but it does work well in the animation. So what we're going to do is add an empty. This will be used to control the light source. So just centralize it, click on both lights and then click the empty and then press control P and parent the object. So that means if you move the empty, it moves the both lights at the same time. And we will be also doing the same thing for the main logo mesh so we can control everything using one object rather than having to individually animate things out. So just collect, select all the paths and yeah, click it again and control P. So this means that you can rotate everything together. Using control alt zero you can set the camera frame to the view you're looking at and from here we're going to be adding the placements for the camera to the location so press i to mark the indication point for the start and then move a few frames forward and do the same again to mark the end this will create a zoom we then need to select the the empty for the lights uh, just make sure it's central and then again insert a keyframe on one and then we'll be creating the full rotation around a similar sort of keyframe as your zoom out. Uh, this will require some trials just to make sure that you can get the uh, speed right. If you increase the size of the lamps and scale them in, uh, you can create sort of narrow lights, which actually create uh, quite an interesting like, sort of Star Wars effect. If you change one color to like a like an opposite when you spin it adds an element of interest so for instance here we get this nice orange um, against the bright white so if we add a little bit more roughness to the uh, metallic material in the front it sort of displaces the light a bit better so you don't have to have an orange it can be any color I personally prefer the orange but the blue also looks quite nice So as you can see, the camera zooms out as the lights rotate all the way around. I did a quick test render to see how it came out. And what I actually wanted to do for this part of the animation is to turn down the HDRI down to zero. So we're just playing with the lighting effect. Uh, we'll be using the HDRI in the spinning effect that we'll sort out in a moment. For this part, we're just relying on the only light sources being the lamps that we've actually added. So 
So I think that looks quite good. I like the orange more than the blue. Uh, so from here, we're just going to be exporting a PNG sequence for the animation. So this is what we have. Looks quite nice. For the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to do a quick process of how I create a twirling effect, which sort of spins the logo in from one side to the other. Um, first things first, we want to just create a duplicate collection of all the assets uh, so that we can make changes to them without uh, affecting our original file. You can either do this in the same file or you can create a duplicate. For this case, I'm going to be using the same one. So I'll just be duplicating the collections. The next thing we're going to be doing is adding another camera as the first camera is linked to the first animation. So just make sure that one is active. So this one's got no keyframes and it's a blank camera. So we're going to be sort of moving the placement of our logo, which will animate the twist. So firstly, we need to move the logo off to the side and sort of rotate it out of shot. We then need to insert a keyframe for location and rotation. This will mark our animation points and then we'll be moving it along in a time to the opposite side and again moving it sort of far away from the camera as well as playing with the rotation. The idea is the logo will come in and sort of fade away as it rotates and sort of twists in front of the camera. This will be great to show off some of the lighting effects that we can use. Uh, this is purely uh, experimental, so it's more so just trying it out, see what fits right. It took me a few different tries to get the animation right into the way I wanted it, where it had enough um, sort of gutter space around the logo as it twists in. It's really just a trial and error process. The main focus you want to do is sort of play with distance that the logo travels and the rotation of it and try and keep it quite consistent. Now that I have an animation style that I'm happy with, I'm just going to quickly just uh, see how it looks within the preview mode and then we'll be rendering out a copy. I want to add a little bit of metallic hues to the outer rim just to make it pop a little bit as it rotates. Okay, so we're going to set this off to render and see how it looks. So this is the outcome. That's all for today's tutorial. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks.